Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dreaming AI. My name is Nuked, and today we are going to learn how to turn our sketch into a proper drawing or photo while still maintaining control over the style applied to the subject in the image. It's a bit like Laura, but without pre-trained models for the occasion. To do this, we will use ControlNet, which I've already covered in a previous video, and IP Adapter. IP Adapter stands for Image Prompt Adapter and is a technology developed by Tencent, a massive Chinese multinational that, like others, is diving into the magnificent world of AI. One of the greatest qualities of IP Adapter is its ability to extract style features from an image to perform operations with it. What we'll do today is apply that style to an image that we'll hand draw. To use IP Adapter on our comfy UI, we'll use the nodes created by the legendary Matteo Spinelli, updated to the latest version. If you are using the previous version, be very careful because, as communicated by him, this update is not backward compatible with previous versions, so all workflows created before March 23, 2024 will need to be recreated following the new flows. Alright, let's get started. First, I installed IP Adapter by simply cloning the repository into the custom node folder and restarting Comfy UI. Then, I downloaded the various models following the guide in the repository's README. Be very careful to maintain the model names as indicated, especially for the clip vision models, because the browser tends to rename them to model.safetensor. The name is important as the new loader nodes rely on it to find these models. Also, to follow this tutorial, you'll need to have ControlNet installed, specifically ControlNet Advanced, along with a Scribble model. For a more detailed guide on ControlNet, you can refer to a video that I'll link in the description, but briefly you just need to clone the node as usual and download the models into the Models ControlNet folder. Um, as far as I know, it doesn't have any additional requirements to install and should work on the first launch of Comfy UI. Now, let's go to Comfy UI and load the default workflow. We'll add the clip set last layer for models that need a layer different from the defaults and disconnect the prompts and the model from the case sampler. I'll try to set up some buses right away to make the workflow more organized. Next, let's load IP Adapter Unified Loader to IP Adapter Encoders and IP Adapter Combined Embeds and an IP Adapter Embeds node. We'll also load the control net part that we'll need to interpret our sketch. As you know, I'm using advanced control net from the same author as Animate Diff Evolve. So let's start connecting the nodes in this way. The unified loader is the node that loads our IP adapter model. Since I want to use only one model for this workflow, let's connect it to all the nodes that require this parameter. As for the IP adapter embed, we'll connect the initial model to it. The reason we've added two encoders is that we'll need to concatenate two different images. The first one will be our sketch, which we can either load with the load image or draw directly using a convenient node by Alec Pat called the Painter node. You can download this node from this GitHub repository and install it as usual. The second image in this workflow will instead be loaded directly from the load image node. 
Now, let's select a model of our choice. For example, I like the plus model, but feel free to experiment with others if you want. Next, we'll use the Combine Embeds node to combine our two encoders, leaving the method as get. We'll connect the output of Combine to the positive embed, while we'll use the negative of our sketch as the negative embed. Moving on to ControlNet, let's connect the positive and negative of the two conditionings. The image corresponding to our sketch and through the control net loader advanced the scribble model we downloaded earlier. Then, let's attach the resulting conditionings directly to the case sampler wall for the model. We'll use the one modified by IP adapter. Let's replace save with preview, since I don't want to save every output that will be created. All right, now let's configure our workflow. Uh, first, let's adjust the weight of our sketch so that IP adapter gives it more importance than the second image. For this example, I'll load an image I've already drawn as I don't want to waste time trying to draw something with my very limited drawing skills. Then we'll add some prompts describing the output image but not to specifically to avoid conflicts with the style we'll inherit from the second image. Next, let's choose our model. As always, I'll go for a main mix, my favorite model. We'll also slightly lower the strength of control net. Since we'll do more than one trial, Let's set the seed to fixed so we can compare the results better. I'll increase the generation steps a bit, decrease the CFG a bit, and use Euler Ancestral as the sampler, as it's one of my favorites. Finally, let's start generating the image and enjoy the result. Well, we immediately notice that the result is indeed very consistent with what we've drawn and the style we've applied, However, the eyes were not drawn closed but open. I've tried changing both the values and the models of control net and IP adapter in my various attempts, but the only way to achieve a completely consistent result was to add a simple closed eyes to our positive prompts. This way, we achieve a very high alignment between the drawn image and the output as even the shape of the closed eyes reflects that of those in the scribble. However, I'm not satisfied with the overall quality of the image which is full of artifacts, so I've decided to add a second processing step. To do this, we'll simply add another case sampler where we'll connect the original conditionings and model. For the latent, we'll connect the one from the previous case sampler. Then we'll leave the rest as default and decrease the denoise to a fairly low level, as this case sampler should only have a small impact on our image. As we can see, especially on the neck, we have a much more consistent image. Of course, we can continue to improve it, perhaps by trying to increase the noise or changing the sampler, but that's up to you. Now, let's move on to other examples while keeping everything else the same, but only changing the second image. As you can see, the style has been maintained very well. But see if the eyes are also correct. In the second pass, the eyes are not consistent with the style of the image, although they are correct in the first one. To correct this, we can further decrease the denoise so that the model doesn't put too much of its own into the image. In other cases, you can also directly modify the prompt. Well, that's all for today. I hope this video has been helpful. For me, this is part of my persistent attempts to create controlled graphic coherence between one image and another. I would like to be able to create something animated simply starting from sketches one day, which is still a bit difficult for me with current systems. But 
I must say this was a fairly satisfying step, and I hope it is for you too. Uh, I want to thank everyone who has decided to support me both on YouTube and on Patreon, and all those who have decided to subscribe and leave likes. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing too. Also, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out as much as I can. And until next time, keep dreaming.